welcome to the first episode of Coffee Innovation Series by ITD on it. In this, in the tough times of this pandemic, all of us face a number of problems, both on personal and professional levels. While most of us complained, there were a few who actually stood up and worked on an, on innovative solutions to these problems. And with this series, we bring to you these amazing people. As our very first guest, we are glad to have Dr. Anasuya Roy, material scientist, founder, and CEO of Nanosif Solutions a technological startup in collaboration with IIT Delhi. She and her team developed the NCF mask during the peak of pandemic, which can be used up to 50 times. Hello, ma'am. Can you give a brief Hello, introduction about yourself? Very good evening. Um, first of all, thank you for inviting me on this very special platform, which focuses only in COVID-related research activities. Um, and uh, I didn't know that you people had an IIT Delhi on air. I am very glad to be a part of it. And especially because I have a, a very special IIT Connect. Actually, I am a two-time alumnus with uh, IIT Delhi. I did my master's also and my PhD also with IIT Delhi. So I'm very glad today that I could be a part of the series. So a little bit introduction about myself as um, Aditya pointed out. I'm Dr. Anasuya Roy. I'm the founder and CEO of NanoSafe Solutions. NanoSafe Solutions being a technological startup in collaboration with IIT Delhi. Um, and yes, the NSAFE mask is our recently launched product to fight the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. So about myself, I, as I pointed out, I did my master's and my PhD with IIT Delhi. And um, I was also a DART research fellow. And I spent uh, the second year of my master's in University of Stuttgart, Germany, and then came back from here um, you know, started PhD with IIT Delhi, had been a wonderful experience full of very good memories. And then after completion of my PhD, I started my own venture, NanoSafe Solutions. What was your motivation behind launching the startup uh, NanoSafe Solutions? Yeah, so um, as uh, you know, you, you can see around it, a lot of PhD uh, people who are into research and all that kind of tend to do um, tend to go more into research, tend to go more into teaching and all uh, academic kind of profile. But um, all throughout my life, I had been a risk taker. I love risks and I love challenges. So um, I, though I had got a good faculty position after completion of my PhD, um, you know, I thought that I'll join and you know, all that, but uh, at that point of time, uh, I realized something was not right. Something was not clicking. Something was not dating enough. And um, then, you know, this biotechnology ignition grant uh, came up. This is a special grant, which is given by BIRAC, Biotechnology Ignition Research Assistance Council. And these are, uh, these, this is a grant, uh, the grant in aid, which are given to researchers um, at early stage to kind of commercialize the already uh, developed lab technology into a uh, prototype. So I thought this is a very challenging, uh, you know, job to, you know, to go, to take forward with. So I applied in BIG. Uh, at that point of time, I did not have any uh, business related uh, experience or uh, formal training. So I just, I was just in my final year of my PhD. So I just went forward with it. I got the BIG grant. And after the, after getting the grant, there was actually, there, there was no looking back. I immediately knew that this is the kind of uh, the challenge. This is the kind of a lifestyle I wanted to uh, adopt to. So as they say, entrepreneurship is not a is not a job; it's a lifestyle. So that kind of resonated with me very well. And um, after that, you know, you know, if you come into the life of an entrepreneur, especially uh, you know the person who is driving the company, you will see so much ups and downs in a single day, in a single day, in a single hour. You know, it, it's like a sign car, and it it gives me immense pleasure and immense um, you know excitement to be a part of that journey. So I guess that is uh, where my motivation lies even today. All right. Uh, you mentioned that there were challenges that you would you would talk about. So let's let's say about them because uh, during this pandemic, it would be it would have been really tough for you as well and your team as well to you know gather gather and work on a, on a product that is not that 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 cannot be done digitally. It, you will you have to come to the lab and work. So tell us let us little bit, bit about the challenges that you face. Um, if I have to talk particularly about the NCF mask, so NCF mask was launched at a time when um, whole of India was in lockdown one. So I'm talking about last week of uh, April. Yeah. So it was that around that time there was 
uh, total lockdown across India. People were confused, scared, um, and there was total chaos. And at that point of time, the prices of masks were shooting up, like uh, because there was a scarcity of masks. So everybody were required, were mandated to use a mask. It's actually my uh, bachelor's is in textiles. So uh, from textiles uh, and material scientist point of view, I felt very frustrated in the sense that I thought that maybe this is the time for me to do something for the nation because this is where my core competency lies. This is where I'm taught to do how to get things done. So at that point of time, we thought that we, we can identify and select some kind of uh, alternate sources of textile materials, you know, and uh, we thought that cotton layer, of course, uh, you know, as who guidelines suggest, a mask has to be three layers. So we thought the inner layer, we will made it as cotton because it is in contact with the human skin. So cotton is the very obvious choice. And the next two layers, we selected uh, a man-made fabric uh, in such a way that the filtration efficiency is controlled. And what advantage we got by choosing three, these three kind of different fabrics is that the mask became reusable. So we thought at that point of time, the um, reusability of the mask has to be taken into account. There is no way about it. So we thought that we will make a mask which is reusable up to 50 times. So 50 times you can use and safe mask and you, you can wash it and use it. So that was one of the USP of uh, NSAFE mask. The other USP we thought that we will um, bring with NSAFE mask is uh, an antiviral layer. So this, uh, if you look at this uh, other masks, they do not have any functional component in it. So we thought that we will put an antiviral uh, chemical, um, let's say coating in the mask so that if any virus or bacteria which comes in contact with the mask will get neutralized within minutes. So that is another technology that we uh, kind of, uh, you know, incorporated in NSAFE mask. If I talk about challenges, there are plenty. My manufacturing was taking place in Noida and I'm situated here in Delhi. So, um, and there was a lockdown happening. So Noida, if you know, it's in a different state. And I'm in a different state and, you know, there were kind of barriers and uh, you, you required a pass through to, you know, go for interstate travel and we did not have it. So people at, there were people at Noida and there were people at Delhi and we used to meet at the border. So that was the general <laughs> rule that we followed that we met at the border. We thought, okay, so we have tried at least around 50 different types of masks because you know we were trying uh, playing with different designs and we were playing with different uh, materials uh, different uh, you know elastic bands so all that has to be taken into account if, uh, uh, before commercializing uh, commercializing the product or launching the product so uh, this was one of the challenges yes logistics was a huge huge challenge um, of course labor is another huge challenge you need people who can you know sew your mask into uh, uh, whatever shape or form you need it so that was uh, of course that is a challenge that even we face today because uh, of the huge labor migration that happened during the lockdown times and then uh, there was always this challenge of uh, you know uh, getting the raw material procured because the people who are supplying this textile fabrics they're also in lockdown mode suppose i locate a distributor or locate a vendor who's located in let's say ahmedabad or uh, let's say in the gujarat region and i needed that fabric to be transferred to delhi so it's very difficult you know in lockdown times you have to get a lot of permissions to do that so because the sensitive mask was kind of um, uh, conceptualized and brought forward in the lockdown time these were the challenges especially which was associated with this mask but we were very uh, happy to you know, uh, see the outcome of it so we got huge response after the mask was launched in the month of may 2020 great ma'am so in these difficult times, how IIT Delhi helped your startup uh, and what do you think is the role of education institutions like IITs uh, in this sector? Yeah, so uh, IIT Delhi uh, was very supportive right from day one. So, um, so uh, uh, typically startups are incubated in um, FITT, FITT is Foundation for Innovation Technology Transfer. So NanoSafe is also incubated there. And uh, the first day I decided that, okay, this is something that I can value add in, something that is my expertise and I can actually pull this off. I talked to my uh, managing director of FITT. I wrote him a mail saying that this is, this is how I want to take this forward. 
and he was very encouraging about it he told me if you need any help just let me know and we are all there for you he guided me especially um, to get a trademark to get a patent um, to get a design patent as well so all that we did just before launching the mask before launching the mask we had full copyright full intellectual properties of the mask and this you know this happened in a very short duration within 10 days it happened 10 to 15 days it you know kind of from conceptualization right to launch and he was there i mean uh, he encouraged me a lot personally i mean i know him very personally and we kind of uh, talk over whatsapp and mails and he is very encouraging you know, in that way um and uh, of course iit delhi has given me a very good platform to launch the product the press release that happened from iit delhi kind of covered almost 170 newspapers and uh, electronic media as well and that kind of gave me a lot of mileage uh, ma'am tell us a little bit about what you, what you are uh, working on currently because nano safe masks were like you said launched in may and june so now what now what are the new things that that you and your team has come up for, uh, for covid 19 yeah so uh, recently we are launching um, our zero alcohol hand sanitizer uh, or a protection lotion so if you look at the sanitizer market or the you know lotion market you will see that most of them are based on alcohol so alcohol is a very potent uh, anti viral agent or anti microbial agent as already advertised by who but the problem is on repeated use your hands tend to get dry the other problem is it has a very temporary effect in the sense when you apply it yes all the microbes will get killed but then when alcohol evaporates its lasting effect is also uh, nil so there will be no long lasting effect of using a um, alcohol based sanitizer so i have personally seen that i myself you know being a uh, kind of a microbiologist coming from a microbiologist kind of background i tend to reuse this sanitizer a lot so every 30 minutes i tend to apply this alcohol based sanitizer so i thought that maybe you know there there is a better solution so we thought that we will make something that can last on the hands for a little longer duration so we started with 6 hours and now we have got a formulation which can um, uh, go up to 24 hours so if you apply it once it will it will give a lasting effect up to 24 hours so that is the new kind of uh, protection lotion or alcohol um, zero alcohol sanitizer that we are launching it's called rub safe so rub safe is the name and we are kind of um, already it is in manufacturing stage um so hopefully we will you know be able to commercialize it or we uh, make it available to the public uh, next week only so I'd like to tell the students or people who who are you know looking forward to start startups and or get into entrepreneurship something for them yeah so this message i would particularly like to give to the um, um student community of iit who are already uh, you know they're studying at iit in such a premier institute of the country that uh, that it is their responsibility somehow to kind of be a job creator rather than being a job seeker so everybody wants a job but who's going to create it somewhere down the line somebody has to take the responsibility of creating a job so that the other people can you know job vacancies they have to create so that the other people can join or seek jobs in that particular organization and uh, right now i'm very happy that a lot of people a lot of um, young people uh, are coming up with startups and in iit the culture is thriving a lot but lot more needs to be done especially i would say still uh, you know bachelors and masters people are still better but in phd's the general notion has been always to you know focus into more academics which i feel is a little um, worrisome because i feel the phd's are the people who are with the highest expertise and highest scientific knowledge if they can harness that knowledge and they can harness that experience into uh, into realizing something that is tangible for example a startup or something that you know that can create wealth for themselves also and also for the community for the indian community i think that that is something that they should look into i mean this is definitely a career that is worth choosing i would always say that thank you ma'am thanks a lot for your time and thank you for joining us today as a very first guest on this on this series we thank you a lot thank, thank you thank you so much and i wish you all the best for your thanks studies thanks a lot ma'am guys you can visit nanosolutions website for more details about their products